Uh oh. There's the other one. Now the other <laughs> one's up. If it's not one, yeah, it's the like, other. Hashtag you never know what you're going to get when it's live. Yeah. Um, we're, in, we're, in, we're in our Malibu place, and it's like it's not the biggest place in the world. Okay, guys, so. we are live. What's awesome. up, everybody? I'd like to welcome y'all back to the Real Talk with Real Estate Investors show. I'm Trevor Young, along with my man, Dan Caldwell. And man, do we have an awesome guest in store for you guys today. Our featured guest rose to fame as a contender in the Ultimate Fighter TV series featuring uh, Carwin versus Nelson. He's also a former UFC fighter and fight promoter, excuse me, current fight promoter. Uh, he's a real estate investor who's flipped more than 150 homes in Sin City, Las Vegas. And he can currently be seen along with his wife, Aubrey, on their hit TV show, Flip or Flop Vegas, as seen on the HGTV network. Please give a warm welcome to my man, Mr. Bristol Morunde. Bristol, how are you doing today? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, Bristol. Where'd uh -oh. they go? We lost him. <laughs> we lost him. Hey, guys, we're live here, you know, so you yeah. never know what you're going to get. Yep. That's how it goes down. Bristol? I think he's still on, but he's I, there he is. He's, he's trying. Bear with us, folks. <laughs> Uh-oh. Might be frozen. <laughs> no. well, what's that, going on today? Can you hear me? Ah, there he is. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Bristol? How you doing, man? What's happening, guys? How you doing? Doing oh, well. There you go. You're, you're sideways. I'm back. You're back. I, left yet. I had to go get my Starbucks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, man. Man, I tell you what, we're super excited to have you on the show today. Uh, man, uh, you know, I, I, I was talking to Dan and we were kind of talking about guests to have on the show, man. You definitely were, uh, were on the list, man. We love your show. And man, I tell you what, I remember back to you watching you on the, on the Ultimate Fighter series finale, or excuse me, series, you know, and I definitely want to talk about that here in a bit, man. Yes. But how are you doing today, man? How's everything going out there in Vegas? Man, my life is so good right now, and uh, it's uh, it's so chill. I feel like all, all I'm doing right now is construction remodels, and I'm a part time homeschool parent because my kids are on the, the distance learning at the computer. So I'm having to relearn multiplication and uh, division and all this math stuff that I thought I'd <laughs> never have to do again. So I'm a part time teacher, and, and uh, Man, I'm still hitting the gym hard, so I'm always always working out. Like, I just got it in the back of my mind. Like, once you train for ten or fifteen years, you never know when the next fight's gonna happen. So I I never want to get that far out of shape. So I'm always I'm always within striking distance. You never know what's gonna happen. Hey, Dana might might call me and be like, hey, bro, we, got, we had like five guys fall out. You want to step in? And my dumbass would probably do it. Be ready. <laughs> That's it. Hey, that's what fighters do. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So how, how's things in Vegas, man? They got you on lockdown much out there? Yeah, you know, no, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty locked down out here. And uh, I, uh, I went to the Trump uh, boat parade at Lake Mead this weekend. It was awesome, dude. There was like over a thousand boats and yep. the place was rocking, man. Um, I did, I happened to notice the news said a couple hundred people showed up, but if you figure about five to eight people per boat you're at like eighteen thousand people um so it's huge dude and then his rally trump rally here was big nobody was wearing masks um i personally i get a lot of flack for it but i never wear a mask um i don't believe in it um and i'm a healthy person and i'm not coughing or spitting in other people's mouths so i don't feel the need to wear a mask i feel you brother man i hate those things too i only wear them if i'm forced to uh, but yeah. that, I, I try to avoid it at all costs, man. Yeah, we're all on the yeah, same page here. We're, we're all living on the same page for I sure. I love oxygen, bro. Yeah. 
you know, the crazy part about it is, you know, our gym's just, I'm here in Dallas, Texas, by the way, and our gym just opened back up, I guess, maybe about a month and a half ago. And yeah. it's cool and all, but they, they mandatory mass. You can't go in there. They'll kick your ass out immediately with that one. So I go in there, you know, I start out, you know, just having it, you know, just as I should. But boy, by the time it's over, it's pulled down here and it's just a drip to yeah. the trash from my sweat. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I think when I'm done, I just rinse that bad boy out and, and, and move on. But it's how ignorant is that, you know, to ask somebody to wear a mask at the gym? Yeah, jiu-jitsu, not going to happen, bro. <laughs> yeah, especially not, no way in jiu-jitsu, right? That lasts really about two right. seconds. <laughs> Wild, dude. No doubt, man. Well, that's good stuff. I'm glad y'all are, are, are staying moving there, man, and yeah. keeping uh, keep, keeping the business rolling as usual. Yep. That's what you can do, right? So, yeah. but, uh, man, I want to kind of know uh, a little bit more about Bristol, man. I want you to kind of take uh-huh. us on a journey back in time, man. Tell us a little bit about how everything got started and how it came about. Yeah, well, my story really begins in Vegas. When, when I moved here, from Seattle, I had uh, I was buying a house and um, I had a job. I always worked. I never fought really full time um, because I always I always saw that fighting is such a volatile sport that anything could happen. I didn't want to spend my whole life chasing something and ending up with nothing. So you know maybe it hurt me um, in the short term, but turns out I, things were good because I always had a job, a source of income. I didn't put all my eggs in that basket. Um, yeah, it bit me a few times, you know, because I was working and fighting and training and just trying to pack it all in. Um, but I was buying a house and I met this girl. She's blonde bomb bombshell. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, I was like, oh, my goodness. I found out she was a realtor. And so I was, this is perfect. What an easy conversation. I'm like, Hey, I'm buying a house. And she's like, Oh, I'm a realtor. And I was like, wow, acted surprised. And then I went and showed her, the house a couple days later i got a business card and was like sweet i'm gonna show her my house she'll be impressed for sure i showed her the house and i was all proud and she goes this thing's a piece of shit (laughs) (laughs) i was like oh my goodness she hated it she was like and it was gonna be the perfect bachelor pad dude i was fighting me and the guys from the gym we're gonna each get a room it was a fixer-upper i thought i was doing good and uh, she set me straight, really. She said, this house, it, it's crap. It's going to take too much money. And and I couldn't believe it. I just was so impressed with her real estate knowledge at that young age. And yeah. that's really how our relationship started, was actually about real estate, ironically. And so I backed out of that sale the day before I was supposed to close. I really felt bad. But uh, yeah. but we, I waited. And she was right. It turns out um, I trusted her. I knew she really was speaking the truth. Then a couple months later, in 2009, she found the perfect house for me and I waited for it. And there it was 99,000 back in 2009. Wow. Um, that house now would sell for like 300, just the price, you know, that time the economy was in the dumps here in Vegas, things were cheap. Sure. Um, so we bought it and I bought it. I bought it with an FHA loan. Um, like I didn't have cash. She, um, I had enough for like, you know, I'm look, I'm, I'm like a destitute fighter, have a decent job. Like I don't have a lot of money. So she fronted the construction cost to remodel it. Wow. And we, we did everything together, dude. We, I, I was on YouTube trying to figure out like how to paint cabinets and I'm like trying to watch videos and I, I'm handy, but I had to look up everything, how to, how to plumb, you know, like how to plumb sinks. And so we did with like $12,000. We remodeled this very first house, 2009. We listed it. And it sold four days later and we made a $78,000 profit. Wow. That's a, that's a great profit margin right there. $78,000 after yeah. cost and everything, huh? Yeah. And um, that's a lot for a fighter that's fighting for like 2000 bucks. Right. And I, I was stoked. I'm like, dude, let's buy a boat. And she was like, you're retarded. We're going to invest it. And I was like, ah, <laughs> Voice of reason strikes again. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so she really, she really brought something to the table. She was helping you find yeah. yourself. Exactly. So we teamed up, and over time, we we kept flipping and flipping. And in that time, I was fighting too. So 
I would work on houses. I had a job. I, I kind of, I look back and I just shake my head and I'm like, no wonder I kind of struggled because I wasn't really doing one thing. I was being the jack of all trades. And when you're not a master of your trade, you're really going to struggle a little bit. Um, yeah. And so I, I was fighting and then I would take a short notice fight. I would win. So I would lose some, you know, I was playing that game, trying to get the best of both worlds. Um, and then finally I got asked to go on the ultimate fighter. Uh, and that was my first experience with any kind of reality TV. And I'll be honest with you, man. I look back and I'm like, I was terrible on camera. I was nervous. I was sweating through my freaking shirts. I was like, uh, what do I do with my hands? I, I look back and I'm just like, oh my goodness. I was terrible. I was so like nervous in that house. I was like, I want everybody to like think highly of me. I want to be professional. I was all stiff and like had anxiety, you know, like always, oh, there's a camera. Let me look good. And I look back and I'm like, what an idiot. What was that total experience like, man? I just always wonder, you know, just being a yeah. house full of, of, you know, testosterone, ready to go, ready to rock. And <laughs> yeah, I just, I just can't imagine. I mean, how long, how long were y'all taping? How long were y'all in the house for? Yeah, it, it, we're in there. It ends up being almost seven weeks. Wow. So I think the experience is different for every person. So if you ask different guys, you're going to get a different answer. Um, cause there's guys on the show that lived on a couch in his friend's garage. And I think it was an upgrade for him. So he was stoked. He got free meals. He got a ride yeah. to the gym. And, but for me, I already had a house and a pool here in Vegas, like 30 minutes away. Hmm. So I, it was kind of torture for me. I was like, I hope, I hope my little boy is out of the pool. I, you know, I'm like, I'm like, man, I, I was stressing out and they're like, man, I, I just want to go home. Like up there i could i could almost see it you know I was like, oh yeah i'm like i'm like in here with a bunch of meatheads that like that don't even have a career or like a, most of them didn't own houses or anything and i'm like man what am i doing here i feel like i don't feel like i belong here it was like too stressful for me and, and i didn't really perform that good i like i took that pressure and, and i really like held myself like to such a high standard it was unattainable and i, I feel like i didn't really perform like I wasn't loose. I wasn't flowing. I was like, just trying to like force this and get out of there. Mm -hmm. Well, man, i tell you what, you know, again, I, I love that show and, and it, it was an awesome show. And, and I, but I get where, where you're at, man. I don't know that I would want to be stuck. I, <laughs> I know. A bunch of strangers. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> man, I'd probably been wanting to get out of there too. So uh, yeah. Especially being away from your family at that time. And yeah, uh, dude, I'd like to go through a lot. Yeah, but I look yeah, back both your now, boys. I, I have two boys. They're they're six and nine. Oh, wow. I mean, were they both? Were they both? Uh, were they both born no, at that time? I, I only had my oldest was two, like two and a half. Right. Yeah. So, He's like, I, I look back now. I'm I'm totally cool with being in front of a camera because I did three seasons of Flip or Flop, you know, and yeah, and it, it's totally rolls off. And now it's fun. Now it's like, how cool? How, let's create some fun scenes. Let's have a good time. Let's have good energy. Let's smile. I know what to do with my hands now. Nothing, yeah. you know, just normal <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. But back then, I was like, "Oh, the camera's like froze," you know, like yeah, uh, like. It, but it maybe maybe out. it was a, a preparation for you. You know, you had all this yeah. prep time. You were in there for seven weeks, and and yeah. and you know, also fighting too. There's a lot of pressure fighting. I mean, yeah. I'm sure something like that. You know, it only takes one bad season of flip or flop to them go. Oh, okay, let's get the next yep. couple. Let's find the next couple. I think, uh, I mean, looking at, you know, if there's a, you know, the bigger power, um, somebody was prepping you, getting you ready for, yep. for what was going to be your destiny, you and your wife's destiny. I think so, dude. And that's like everything. If you like, if you take things step by step in life and you're upset, oh, I didn't win the ultimate fighter. I didn't get this big contract. Like my life didn't take off there. Like it's so cliche to say one door closes another opens, but, but it's, it really is true. You can't take that one little snapshot of your life and judge your life by that because look what happened. Some better things happened. Like I could have been making, I could have be, you know, I could be in the, in the UFC making 20 and 20 a fight or selling yeah. a house for like 150,000 being, you know, having my own TV show. So you're like, really dude, you know, like it turned out good. So I'm, I'm thankful the way things turned out. Oh yeah, for sure. So, so walk us through where, okay. So you, you're, you do this house, you do a second house with uh, Aubrey and you, what happens after that? What is, 
what gets you what, you just start flipping homes now has it become a full-time job it was it was a part-time job for a while because um we were we had to do we had to use loans at first you know we didn't have the cash to buy um now we kind of take it for granted we're like oh that's a good deal let's scoop it up and we buy all our homes with cash now Right. Um, but back then I didn't, we didn't have 150,000 plus the renovation budget too. So we had to, to kind of go through the loan process and, and really had to pinch that out, squeeze it, you know, down payments, construction costs, kind of just weasel our way through until we built up enough reserves. And, um, Aubrey had to, you know, keep fighting me from buying boats and cool shit. <laughs> <Put> your <laughs> so, money away, save your money. Yeah. Exactly. So we, we, we had to like pack away for a long time, you know, like we, we even still to this day, we, we live pretty conservatively because we know I didn't forget what it was like to be a poor fighter trying to do a house on a minimal budget. Um, so we, we keep that nugget and um, it took quite a few, it took a couple of years before we could buy the first house with cash. And that was awesome. We were like, Oh, we have this cash. And we just like, and, and we're not talking like, tons of cash we're talking like just enough cash to buy the house so right. that's kind of how we rolled is we rolled we didn't roll the dice we knew what we were doing because what we believe is you have if you're going to flip houses the reason we are successful is we have these five elements to flipping houses number one is the real estate knowledge that's aubrey when or where and when to buy two we have construction which is me Three is design, which is also Aubrey. That's important. Is would be all your product, your design, colors, everything. And then four, you have to have cash, cash money. And number five is good credit. Those things are important. Now, if you have the cash, you really don't need credit. But if anybody's getting into flipping, I'd ask them, okay, which of these five, how many of the five do you possess? Because um, a lot of people ask me, Oh, I would love to get it into flipping houses. It's my ultimate dream. I'm like, awesome. Okay, what's your what do you have to bring to the table for what it requires to flipping houses? And they're like, well, people make a lot of money. I want to do it. And my my go to was, there's a lot of money in MMA. Why don't you try that? And they go, oh no, no no, GSP makes like five million a fight. Why don't you do MMA? And they go, no, no, no I don't want to do that. And I'm like, well, that's what you're saying. Somebody else makes a lot of money in flipping. That doesn't mean you can. Right. right. Talk to us a little bit about how you go about finding deals. And you mentioned that, that when and where is an important aspect of, mm -hmm. of, you know, going through a deal and going through the motion. How do you go about finding deals and how do you decide when and where that, that should happen? Right. Well, in my case, the best thing you can do is marry a bomb realtor who happens to be smoking hot. That's the, number, <laughs> yep. that's the number one that's, thing that too. sounds like a winning move to me yep. yeah so it turns out I, I win in the end no um really it's the the knowledge of the real estate market is the most important thing you can't it, that's that's where it starts is the location of the house and what to pay for it because most people say oh i i found this house i'm like where is it well it's not in a great area well how much is it what's well, for this much money and i'm like is that a good deal i don't know you tell me and i'm like well then maybe you shouldn't be doing this. If you're just going to don't shoot, there's no shot in the dark. That's just a, a recipe for disaster. Sure. Um, we all know location is the most important thing because if, if you have a house that's near like a busy freeway or that's undesirable location underneath power lines um, and has some, a lot of these factors that people, buyers don't want. Um, if you buy it in there, no matter how great and, and uh, the great, the remodel is, you're not going to get top dollar for it and you're probably not going to make any money or you're going to lose money. Yeah, that, that's so true. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I know when we first got into it, our, our, the, we've never lost money, thank goodness. But uh, yeah. the first house we ever bought, we, uh, we only made about 3000 bucks on it. And it was because yeah. we didn't, it was such a beautiful house and everything was yeah. perfect except for it had no backyard. The backyard was like, you know, seven feet across. Yeah. And, and we weren't thinking about that because we were just thinking about how yeah. great the house looked, but it was a, it was a four bedroom and yeah. you don't, what do you have a four bedroom for? You're obviously going to have kids and kids are going to want to yep. play somewhere and not having a backyard will kill you. And you don't think exactly. about those things until it happens to you sometimes. Yep. That's yeah. Yeah. Real estate that. agent on your side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And a lot of that. And, and fortunately, Aubrey's her experience is showing 
thousands of houses in the Las Vegas Valley. So she's seen so many designs and areas and she knows what clients want. So that's, so she knows what is the end user going to want when they buy a house. So she knows she's heard a thousand times people say, um, you know, Oh, I love this about this house or I hate that. So she already knows that. And, um, and then now I bring in the construction aspect. So we don't have to hire a contractor. We don't have to pay real estate fees. We're not paying a designer. And if we buy a house and suddenly the AC goes out or there's a big crack in the foundation or we need all new windows, we don't care. I'll just do it. So it's not like we never get into a house where we're like, oh, crap, we, we didn't know this is going to happen. We've never freaked out. We're like. I just shrugged my shoulders and like, all right, it just means, you know, a couple more hours worth of work. It's not a big deal. Cause we already know there's a profit in it. We know how much we have to spend. So like we've just done it so many times that we understand going in the house, we'll walk through it and say yes or no right away. We don't need to, we don't have formulas. We don't have this. Uh, I know a lot of people are probably more organized than we are, but we just already know it. Like we'll go into a house and be like, Aubrey will tell me, yeah, I think there's a, probably an 85 to ninety thousand dollar profit and i'll walk in and i'll say what do you think comes construction and design probably 25 30 yeah she'll say all right all right cool let's do it go write it up that's it yeah yeah i'm sure your brain's working it out you've done enough homes that you go okay where you know the bathroom's gonna be about this the kitchen's gonna be about that i'm gonna have to paint yeah you know there's a few things that you know that are just automatic in your head and and she knows how much it's gonna sell for i'm sure she's done some comps and, yep. you know, it just come in natural to you guys now. I'm, I'm sure you guys weren't yeah. like that when you first started. It, no, it's not like wasn't. that. Oh, where's the AC unit? Like, oh, we're tripping out, you know, like calling. Oh, like I'm up in the attic. Like, why is this thing looking like this? You know, like, but now I don't, I don't care. And, and you assemble like good workers and, and good contacts and over time. So, yeah, if you're going to get into flipping, the first couple are really hard and they are stressful. That's true. That's true. And with that being said, I'm just curious. And I always like to ask this question. What was your biggest nightmare flip? You know, tell, tell us a little bit about the, the horror story that you had. And then also tell us a little bit about the biggest flip. You know, the, the one that you're just really proud of. When somebody asks you about what you do, you talk about this house. Yeah, man. Um, the, the one, you know, we had, uh, <laughs> we always... We have people always ask, you ever find anything valuable, like money or drugs or anything cool? And I'm like, okay, that, let's go through this. Let's just think about this. Nobody leaves drugs in a house and nobody ever leaves money. Like those are the two things you'll never find in a house. Right. Those are the first things to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah. So I, um, the, the most proud house I think we are is, is one we did in Boulder city. And, uh, it's just that's about 20 minutes outside of vegas for people that don't know and this house was it was the guy had lived there for 40 years and he was a a huge hoarder and he had this place stacked full of just books and supplies and cars and um he didn't uh, unfortunately he started his health declined and he didn't have water for over a year and so he used the restroom in the house and that was just hey he had like showers rigged up with uh, buckets and the neighbors told us that when um when he passed away they had like cops and everybody had like hazmat suits and they were going in there and they were like coughing and their eyes were watering and they're like don't anybody go in there it was like it was like a biohazard um because the roof was missing and all this stuff but oh my god it took it took like eight full dumpsters to get all that junk out of there, like the big ones. And, uh, but the place turned out so good. And you know what, too, is the neighbors are, are um, they can be some crazy neighbors, but they're also so thankful that you're cleaning up a house that they've been staring at for like 20 years. Oh yeah, years. it brings so, all their values up. They love that. We, we got like so many, exactly, dude. So we got like so many bottles of wine and like we got invited to everybody's house for parties and it was cool to be able to go in and know that you're like uh, enhancing the neighborhood and bettering the whole neighborhood's lives and the, and the aesthetics of it. So that that kind of pr- like pride and knowing that you're building something and you're improving the community goes a long way. It's not just money, uh, making money too. 
Oh yeah, I bet. So was that is that do you call would you call that your both worst and best house? That's that was definitely the worst and the best. And we made a huge profit there. It was it was over uh we made about a two hundred thousand there. Wow. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, wow. awesome. what about have we you ever to... lost money on a home? No, we've fortunately we've never lost money in a home. Well, knock on knock we, find some wood, brother. Yeah, <laughs> knock on wood. Well, knock on that, wood. That, Exactly. That brings me to a good point. So one of the, the things that we've always started from the beginning is that we're, we're going to have a plan B with the house. So if, if we get in a tight spot, we're only going to ever buy houses that we can rent out. Right. We're never going to. So uh, we have, we probably could have made some bigger profits if we like dumped all our eggs into like a million dollar house and, and hit that. But we kind of stayed in our lane and we said, we're going to do like um, anywhere from two to five hundred thousand dollar house range that way if we ever get stuck if the economy ever crashes or a terrorist attack or something we're always going to be able to take the house and rent it out to somebody or if we ever had to we could live in it ourselves that's right that's why i love real estate man so you guys are primarily fl flipping in, in vegas right for the biggest area not hanging anywhere else we actually uh we've been doing a couple houses up in washington too the area that i grew up in we've done about five four or five houses up there in the Northwest. Well, how does that, how do you, how do you work that out? Do you have a, do you have a good contractor up there and or, no, we, or are you going up there? We go up there. Me and the guys, we pack up the trailers, all the tools and uh, we, we got the camper loaded down and we just make the trip, man. We go up there and we'll, we typically do it in the summer when it's nice, like 75 right. degrees. We'll go up there, get a break from the Vegas heat and uh, we'll take like a work vacation. Nice. Well, that's cool. Are they filming the show up there? You obviously you're, you're yeah. only doing Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas yeah. homes. Yeah, we just did that for ourselves. We just wanted to get a different change of scenery. I did think I kind of burned the guys out because they were like getting homesick and up in the Northwest. Right. So they're like, we want to go back home. And I was like, all right, let's go. So we, we tried to finish <laughs> up fast. We just worked some long days and got it done. Nice. Well, that's great, though. It gives you a reason to get out of town and, and you're yeah. still making money at the same time. Exactly. Can't, can't be hard to beat that. Yeah, that's good. Have you bought homes at auctions before? Uh, it sounds like uh, when I think about that home, you know, we've yes. had a home like that, a hoarder's home, and that's what it turned out to be. We really didn't get to see it. Um, right. Or we saw the outside, the exterior of it. We didn't yep. know that when we got inside, it was going to be filled <laughs> full of junk everywhere. So, yep. I mean, how did you buy, how did you purchase that home that you, uh, that you were talking about? Yeah, we've, uh, um, in the early days, we bought a lot of short sales, and now that those dried up because uh, that that over the you know when the economy dipped, that's done. So yeah, we bought a lot of auction. Um, we've we've gone to the courthouse auctions, you know, where where everybody's bidding on the houses and um, like on courthouse steps. Um, we never had a lot of luck there. Um, that that just seemed like a lot of big investors were there, and they had their agents. You got to bring the money there and cashiers checks. Yeah, um, a lot of the houses that we liked. They, um, they would get postponed um, yeah. and they weren't in the greatest area. So I felt like that was more for investors that were um, doing a lot of the, like simple repairs, like paint and just kind of flipping them. That's like your, your main manufacturing flipper. But Aubrey and I, we improved the hell out of them. So we're doing like a full gut. So we're, we're doing a lot of design, all new kitchens, everything. So we're putting money into a house to where a normal investor wouldn't be able to do it because they're not the realtor, the contractor, the designer, the, uh, they're not funding it themselves. So we're able to take a house where someone else might not get enough profit out of it and we'll pinch out a lot more profit than anybody else because just we're over improving the house Custom flip, um getting more out of the house and we get more for our money so like auction.com um hub zoo we've got we bought them like sight unseen in the past we don't we'll do that too we don't mind I dig it, man. And having that, that realtor in your back pocket surely helps. You know, I'm actually in the process. I've been flipping out homes for a few years now, uh, for, for, for a while. And, you know, one of the things that, that I always thought was important, but I just never had the time was 
to get my real estate license, you know, and yeah. a lot of times, you know, you go out to, you know, to, to negotiate a deal with somebody and the deal can't be made, you know, they're just sticking on that retail, retail. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, shit, man, I wish I had the option to just offer to list it. You know what I mean? So I'm yeah. in a process right now of getting my license. Actually, my girlfriend is as well. I, I found me a nice hot blonde as well. She's going nice. to working on her, her realtor license. Like style. <laughs> Maybe we'll have our own show at some point, you know, who knows? Yeah. Which leads me to my next question. How did it, how did Fixer, or, or, excuse me, not fit, Flip or Flop Vegas, how did yeah. that come about? Yeah, so that's, a, um, I would definitely recommend, if you're going to do anything, get a real estate license. Because right there, you can save 3%. On the you know three uh, percent of a three hundred thousand dollar house goes a long ways. Um, over ten houses, you're saving a lot of money. Oh um, but uh, yeah, how do we get the TV show? Um, they actually contacted me. The production company messaged me on Instagram and said, "We are a production company. We're looking at casting you and your wife for a show." And I was like. Yeah, I already did the. I already did reality show, and I, I got punched in the face, and I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> Honestly, life is good. Yeah, you can't you can't make me do that shit again. I fought for free and cut weight three times. I'm like, I don't want to do that shit again. Yeah. But then they they persisted, and they're like, No, no, this is legit. And we, I swear to you, no one's gonna punch you. You're like, this is different. You're like the host. You know, you're not like a piece of meat thrown in a house with a bunch of other guys. And we know they're like, we know that production company and. We don't blame you for being a little disgruntled. That's awesome, man. So they just reached out. You didn't even see yeah. it coming. You weren't applying or nothing like that. Or nothing. like, hey, you want to do this? Fell in, my, fell in our laps. Yeah. So they flew us out to Colorado and it just seemed like a good fit. They were a good production crew. I, I still t keep in contact with a lot of them. They're like really good people. Um, and then we filmed the pilot episode and it's a long process to get a TV show. It's, it's long, dude. Took, almost took a year before we started filming uh, an actual seat in a season. So you have to you have to film a sizzle, a seven minute sizzle. They have to pitch it to the network. They pitched like sixty shows, and ours was the only one that got passed onto the next level. Wow! And then out of pilots, then you go to the next level. Out of pilot shows, we were the only one that was picked, and then and then we got a season one. We did 13 houses in seven months. And let me tell you, man, that was a grind, especially the first season. It didn't get really any better, but the first season was they want you to buy. So we're, we're self-fund all our houses and they want you to buy like five or six houses at one time. So you're still and funding the homes at this point, right? You have to fund the yeah, homes for the show, right? Yeah. We have to find fund, do all the construction. They offer, yeah, they offer, um, help with construction costs, you know, but really when you're working on five houses, at one, you know, three, three to five houses at one time, that, that gets expensive. You got You can't have like a full time crew to work on every house. So you're bouncing back and forth. And it's wild, dude. We were, I was working till like two in the morning, almost like four or five days a week. And I, I literally logged 110 hours one week doing construction. Oh my God. I was exhausted. Wow all the time i was like holy shit i want to go back on the ultimate fighter this shit is hard <laughs> <That's> <laughs> i'd crazy. rather get punched in the face bro because you gotta so, be done yeah good so uh, i'm just saying in comparison so how many houses do you think you were doing at that time before you got the show so like what what was yeah. the jump for you right so it was a huge jump especially in construction knowledge and being on camera it was like it, it was it'd be like saying um having an amateur fighter and being like, all right, you're going to fight in the UFC. Let's go. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, Holy you're like shit. It. Like, this is like, <laughs> you can't stop. You got to keep going. And they're yeah. like, Oh, we're not going to cut you. You got to keep fighting, you know? And you're like, Oh shit. So, um, were you so then I was like, like a few homes a year at the time. Yeah. We were probably doing, you know, one at a time, cherry picking, doing the ones we want. Um, I was, you know, fighting all the time, trying to do that whole thing. Yeah. And uh, so we probably do, we probably flipped like, uh, you know, maybe 10 or 12, probably before that, like a good, a good 12. Yeah. And, uh, and then it was like, all right, I want, we had no idea because nobody would ever, nobody would ever flip uh, 13 houses in seven months. Why the hell would you do that to yourself? Unless, right. unless you had a big crew in your, you know, but like full remodels doing it yourself, filming brutal, bro. I bet that's I another bet. level right there, man. But you probably learned 
learned a lot during that process too, right? Dude, so much, so much about myself and my wife. And um, dude, it's not easy working your, with your wife. You guys know, imagine being with your wife, working like 15 hours a day. And then on camera, you have to smile. Hey, everybody get in a good mood. And you're like, dude, I was up to like- <laughs> in a fight. In the morning. Hey, action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But like you're literally, I, I wish they could film it behind the scenes because you're like fighting behind the door and then you hear him, okay, come in. And you're like, you're there. And then you're like, hey, honey, look at that house. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And what, so, about the, what about the boys? Were the boys coming on site too? How, how did you guys manage all that? Dude, we didn't even- um, we didn't have babysitter or anything. So we just, we, we drop them up at school, go film, pick them up. And then sometimes they, we would just bring a sleeping bag. Uh -oh. 30 or 12, we'll go home. I put them to bed and then I'll wake them up at six in the morning because their school started. And they're like, guys, wake up, let's go. And I was that super annoying, positive parent. Come on, boys, wake up, let's go. Uh, <laughs> I know you're tired, but smile, let's go. And they were just, I was like, man, they woke up. They were just, they would rally, dude. Kids, kids will just rally if you have a good attitude and you're just, hey, I know you guys are tired, but let's go to school. Are you all right? I'm all right. And they would just go to school and be fun. That's oh, awesome. That's yeah, I, bet they, I bet they love the whole TV experience too, man. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Are you guys currently filming right now with everything going on? No, we're off right now. I'm just... We're, we're kind of doing us and it's nice. We're doing whatever, whatever the hell we want. And I can, I'm posting whatever the hell I want online. I don't have executives blowing me up. Hey, you might want to take that down or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> cause I guarantee you that everything I've been saying is like anti-mask, you know, like freedom, this and guns, that. Yeah. They don't like that. They don't like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm with you right there, brother. We're on the same yeah. way. So we're all yeah. with you there. No and doubt. Trevor's from Texas, so you know where he stands on the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. For sure. You know, we had uh, Mr. Rob Van Winkle, uh, a.k.a. Vanilla Ice, on last week, and he was talking yeah. about, you know, before all this COVID stuff, you know, that they were preparing to start the new season in July. So he bought yeah. this big-ass house, you know, and I think he bought maybe a couple other houses, you know, that were <laughs> just strictly for the show, and then they're yep. like, Hey, we're not gonna take. And he's like, "Well, shit, I gotta, I gotta pay for this. Yeah. I got taxes accruing and stuff like that." So yeah. I didn't, I didn't know if, if that's what was going on with y'all. If y'all, if y'all were having to hold on to some things, maybe you didn't want to anything like that. No, dude, we're like, we just, we're so lucky. We talked about it. We're like, man, we would be, we'd be like hurting right now if we had like five houses mid construction. We'd run out of money, bro. Honestly, and so we're just lucky. And dude, there was times. When we were filming, we didn't know what the hell we were going to do because Aubrey and I, there was a time, it was like two in the morning. We were exhausted. We've been working our asses off and we were like down to 2000 bucks. And we're like, I don't, how are we going to finish? Like, what are we going to do? The network's all over us. They're like, we have, they spend over a million dollars, well over a million dollars in production. And they're like, we need you guys to finish. We're, there's no way we need, and we had no money. We're like, we need house one and two to sell in order to buy four five and six. And Aubrey was like, I don't know what to do. Like we have no money. We can't get a, like, we we're, we're screwed. We're going to like, we're going to bomb the season. We can't finish filming. And, um, and then she's like, well, did you pray about it? And I was like, well, I don't really like to pray about things that like, obviously i want personally but i was like let me do it all right so i got on my knees and i was like jesus are you out there i need you okay we're in a tough spot like we need this, we need this house to sell and i don't know what else to do because we're out of money we're out of time and they're all over us because we signed a contract we said we would do it and and four days later we got a full price offer and the house closed immediately. We had the money. We like the money went from house one to house five and six. And it just all like rolled into together. And I was like, I don't know. Aubrey was like, see, I told you all you had to do was pray about it. And I was like, I don't know if that was like divine intervention or just luck, but it legit happened. Wow. That's incredible. And you know, it really goes to show you, it speaks to a lot of people that, you know, they might be on their first house and they're trying to get to their second house and maybe they're not filming the show, but 
They have mm-hmm. other hardships that are going on and right. you know, the bathroom isn't coming together and their contractor yeah. walked off and you know, who knows <laughs> yeah. where they're, where they're yeah. going through, but, but you never know, you know, that been there. just keep moving forward and keep pushing forward yeah. that those things will come together. You'll figure them out. And it you sounds will. like what you guys did. Wait, do you have any advice for like some of the, some, some up and coming yes. uh, home investors that are, you know, still don't have money and still trying to figure yeah. that out and trying to get their first house. Yeah. I would say, uh, a big piece of advice is if you want to flip a house and you don't have a lot of money and I would say move into it and, and work on it. And then when, when you get it all finished and done and you live there and if you can avoid capital gains tax, if you can live in there for like a year, flip it and put it up for sale. And if you make money, then great. Then you can sell it and buy another one and make that profit. But if it doesn't sell, you can still live there. You're not, you're not eating up mortgage payments. And I see a lot of people, they do this, they get, they get a hard money loan because they, they went to a seminar, they paid good money to it. And a side note, Aubrey and I have never done seminars. We don't believe in quick flipping. We don't believe in get rich quick schemes, even though we've been approached many times, Hey, you will pay you good money to, to come to our seminars and, and people will um, learn how to this flipping formula. We never did it. We didn't believe in that because that's not how we did it. We did it off uh, hard work and sweat and tears. And I think that's the only way people can make money. Um, so if you're, if you get that hard money and you go out and you buy a house and you're stuck and now you're paying these like huge payments each month and you're sweating and your contractor walks off or, or he comes back and goes, Oh, it's going to be an extra 5,000. Like, you're going to have to shop contractors. You need to go find some workers. You need to go find guys to hire. you. Actor that does hubs now too. Um, that's no, no contractor is going to tell you to do that because they're going to say, Oh no, it's too risky. They may not be licensed. But if you get in a tight spot, you're going to have to go out and find guys. And, and they, they're not guys that you can find at Home Depot. That's labor. So Home Depot and the day labor, those guys, they can dig holes. They can do uh, minor skilled labor. But you need to find some skilled workers on other construction sites that you can pay directly on nights and weekends to help finish your project. I dig yeah, it. I, I totally get yeah, that's, I mean, you know, everybody, all these guys, up and comers, these new real estate investors, um, hard work. It, no, there is no get rich quick in, in this no. business. It all comes with hard work, no matter what you're doing, even wholesaling. Have you ever done any wholesaling? Even wholesaling is work. No, never have. Yeah. You're, beat, you're beating the phones. You're beating, you know, you get turned down a thousand times for anybody wholesaling. Yeah. It's none of it's easy, whether you're building the home yourself. Yeah. Are you doing wholesaling? It's not going to be easy, but it just takes right. pushing forward. You might you might have to get your hands dirty. You know, yep. a lot of people want to go in there and they're like, "Oh, I'll just hire a contractor. I'll just um, here's my profit. I got fifty thousand because I know the house is going to sell for this." And then suddenly they're like, "Oh crap!" Like the contractor is twice as much. The market's not as good as I thought it was, and they're like sweating. They're like, "Dude, we're gonna like we're gonna eat it. We're gonna be we're we're upside down twenty grand." I say you're going to have to learn how to do some of the work your, yourself. Go go to Home Depot and rent some tools. Like, go on YouTube, man. Do what I did. Learn how yeah. to do the shit yourself. You learn anything there, right? <laughs> I yeah. I appreciate you, saying, you telling us a little bit about the pain that comes with that because huh? you know, I think it's important for people to know, listen, we're not all, we've all we've all had success, you know, with real estate and, and a lot of it. But, man, yeah. it's so easy. And, and man, almost there, every deal that you do, there's going to be some pain and some bullshit involved. And you've got to expect yeah. it. It's not yeah. supposed to be easy to make $100,000. You know what no. I mean? But it can be easier than some other ways of making it, you know? And you yeah. just got to go into it with the process, with the plan, and take the right steps, you know, to – to, yep. to, get, to get to the finish line and know that, hey, listen, some, some shit's probably going to happen. You know, it's, yep. it's almost a guarantee and you're going to work through it. And, and, and yep. not only that, but you're going to learn from it and become a better person for the, for the next. Yeah, time. you never know, dude. In California, you might be doing a house and uh, code enforcement comes by and slaps you the big red sticker on the front door. Stop work. You need to get permits. You don't know. A lot of this happens. A neighbor might report you. You know, 
this stuff could happen. Like there's a lot of factors that people just don't know. And so I would expect, I would say when you're, your, your first couple of flips, like whatever your construction budget is, like add another 30% on there. And then when you look at your budget, what you're going to sell the house for, I mean, your profit, take another 30% off there and then go from those numbers. Yeah, exactly. Pad those numbers a little bit because you yeah. never know when, when you're going to be in that house. And then uh, we've had this a couple of times where it, it starts the rainy season kicks in. And next yeah. thing you know, your roof is leaking, something mm -hmm. you totally didn't expect and it's not going to be yeah. cheap. Uh, exactly. Dude. But that happens. That's that's going to happen to you. Yep. That's the name of the game. So tell us a little bit about this, man. We've obviously talked a lot about real estate. What is life like for you outside, outside of the grind, you know, outside yeah. of the slinging the hammer and so forth? Are you still fighting or are you still seeking uh, fights? You know, no, I should I'm I should be done. I, I, I like I haven't officially retired. I need to, I just need to put it in the past and be done and sail off into the sunset. But you know, I, I love to compete. I love jujitsu. I'll go in and at 10th planet jujitsu, man. Like I come to realize that's my, ex, my ex positive escape. I can go in there and just roll. I can feel good. I can be preoccupied. And um, so that, that's what I love to do. I love to go in the gym, run, lift weights. Um, this last weekend, I went, took the family out on the lake. We went boating. Um, and I've, I've come to learn, man, it just, I thought like growing up in your twenties, you think grinding, you're just trying to make it. You want to get, you want to be where everybody else is at. And then you get, then in your thirties, you're still kind of like slowing down a little bit. And then now I'm 38 and now I'm kind of like, Oh, now that I've had some success and have enough money to, to buy things that I thought I really needed when I was younger. Now it's just about family. And now I, you kind of come full circle. And I'm like, oh, shit, I, I've heard this a thousand times. It all is about family. And then now that you get success, you, now it's about spending time with my two boys. we got the four-wheelers loaded up. We'll go ride at nights after school, spending time dealing with my wife. You know, like marriage is, marriage is a full-time job. And those are the things that are important to me. And so when I'm not spending time in the gym, which like I was, I would just bury myself in the gym. I would just go work out and be preoccupied and, and leave the family life at home. And now I don't do that. Now family life is the number one important thing. Um, and I realized that that really is, is the time I keep, my kids are not six and nine and the time spending with them, my relationship is so much better now that we're not filming a TV show and busy all the time. I'm making up for, I think lot, the last three years of filming that show, I'm making up for that time right now. How do you manage your time? Um, I, I let my wife do that for me. She pretty much checks <laughs> in on me. <laughs> That's true. I think we all do that a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, yeah, glad let's take it so long. I'm glad to hear you got your boat finally. So yeah, dude. You, how do you like you take that thing out a lot? Was it a ski boat? Well, what kind of boat you got? Actually, I, bought, I borrowed my friend's boat last weekend. But I'm, oh, I'm okay. A, but I'm, I'm looking at one. I told my wife, I'm just going to buy one. She can't stop me. So I'm, I'm like actively, <laughs> I'm actively searching now. I'm going to buy one. Yeah. Well, you get some good family time out of it, right? That's really. Dude, for sure. It was fun. Yeah. We took, went out there and the wife got seasick in the first like five minutes. So I think it'll probably be just me, be me and the boys. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it. I just like to turn the motor off a little bit and just kick it out there in the water. Yeah, jump out in the water a little bit. Just yeah, cool. especially I love being beach. on a boat too, because I, I grew up in, uh, I grew up commercial fishing in Alaska, so I, oh, I did, I fished for like four seasons out there, so I spent a lot of a lot of time on a fishing boat. Oh, and you know, there I've seen them, I've seen that show too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, did, I did that. I, that's how I bought my first car was, go, and then help pay for college, is fishing, catching salmon. Yeah, you can you can make make a lot of money doing that, but man, mm -hmm. I tell you what, them them waves, that ain't no joke out there. Yeah, dude, I I, I got seasick quite a few times. No, I bet. I tell you what, and, and yeah. you know, back to what you were saying earlier about the Trump parade and the Trump boats. Mm -hmm. You that wasn't where those two boats had sank, right? You know, there was some parade where I guess two boats went under. Yeah. You hear about that? Yeah, and that that's all I saw in the headlines. It's like two boats sink to Trump rally, and like. 
dude, boats sink all the time, you know? Yeah, because the waves are huge, too. When I was out there, I had, the, I, I had waves crashing over the ski boat, and I had to, like, give it gas. My wife was like, we're going to sink. And I'm like, oh, hell no, we're not going to be those people. But I had to, like, gas it a little bit and uh, get the bow up because we had some big waves rolling over that ski boat. Yeah, I bet. And I tell you what, that wouldn't have been fun going back and telling your buddy. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, dude, I was like, I'm not going to be that person. <laughs> Funniest thing happened. <laughs> yeah. We laugh about this. Well, well, Bristol, man, we sure appreciate you coming on the show today, man. You know, I, I know you didn't have to do this, so we sure appreciate your time. and We don't want to hold you up. Yeah. Uh, man, let me just ask you this. Is there anything that, that you would like to leave with our audience, anybody that's listening that's either – you know, starting out that's looking to get into to real estate investing or people that are just looking to get to that next level. Is there any, that one piece of advice, that one piece of nugget that you'd like to leave behind for them? Yeah, I would say when you're like, I wanted to get to the next level and be careful what you wish for, because it's going to come with a lot of, a lot of what we call is hard work. But there was times when um, people, what I learned a lot from reality TV was that all people see is the snapshot. All people see is the Instagram photos. And, but behind that really is the blood, sweat, and the tears, the late nights going, Holy crap, how are we going to afford this? And I don't know how to avoid that, honestly, because that's what made me what I am now and losing all those fights on the, you know, in the UFC or in the ultimate fight or whatever um, that led to other things. So I think we need to understand that, where you're at is where you're at. And um, we always want to get to the next level, but sometimes it's like, stop and just enjoy your life. Enjoy your family. And don't always be looking too far into the future because what I had all along was exactly what I needed. Um, and when we were filming that show, it was all about, let's get these houses done so we can go on to the next episode, the next thing. And it's like, dude, just slow down enjoy your life. Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll never be rich. Maybe you're going to flip this house and make a little bit of money. Um, but the most important thing is that you enjoy your life and enjoy your family. Thank you, man. Well, I sure appreciate you, man. Where can folks go to find out more about you? Man, just follow me on Instagram or, or Facebook. Um, if, if you're not too offended by political posts and, and second amendment pro rights, <laughs> uh, a lot of people a lot of people take hgtv and go oh are you gonna put this guy on tv he, he he's a patriot i'm like hell yeah i'm a patriot that's i love right. america that's right i love it man i've seen your stuff man yeah keep pumping it out well, bro, all right dude we appreciate yeah, you appreciate it. thanks bristol we appreciate you coming on brother you're the best all right thanks guys have a good day we'll see you soon take care see you, bro. Bye -bye.